So it wasn't a decision made lightly. And I learned over there how to hear from the Holy Spirit because I didn't have anyone I could ask. I didn't have anyone I could run to and I could say, I don't understand this scripture right here. Abraham, you know, he's supposed to take his son up and how can a God of love have him take his only son up there that he promised him and kill him? You know, to the natural mind, those things don't make any sense. But I had to learn how to rely on the voice of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit, I had to acknowledge and invite him to be my teacher, and he opened up revelation knowledge. That's how he teaches you. He reveals things. Romans 16, 25 through 27, the mystery, the cap, the lid, the covering on the mystery is taken off. When you get born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, the mystery is taken off. But you have to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Be willing to change your mind. If you've believed things in the past and were taught things that don't line up with the Word of God, you have to be willing to let those things go and say, no, I'm going all out for the Word. I'm going to be radical for the Word. If I was wrong about that, Lord, forgive me. Show me the right way. I'm willing to learn. I'm going to head toward that place that you're calling me to. I'm going to head toward that place. So I got born again and spirit-filled in Saudi Arabia. And we started a church, a group of believers. And we saw miracles all the time over there. But it was a decision that everyone who made the decision to go with Jesus Christ, that decision was not made lightly. I went into jails over there. And you know, I still have my head, as you can clearly see. But that was a decision that none of us made lightly because we knew the consequences could be our own death, it, and certainly not a pleasant death. But I noticed in America, there's not that same gutsy kind of Christianity. And that disappoints me. It grieves me because we need that today. We don't see the power of God because all too often we have a lot of mixture in our own lives. As I said, going to movies, let's just say the tavern, participating in things that are darkness on Thursday or throughout the week, it doesn't matter. And then on Sunday, you're praying that the Holy Spirit, oh God, send your power, send your glory. You know, out of his mercy, he doesn't do it. And that's the reason. We can't live a life that's not consecrated, that we don't make the decision and the choice to set apart our life to live for him and then just live any old way we want and expect the power of God to come and reside. That doesn't work. That's mixture. God hates mixture. Don't do that. God, if you ask him, by the power of his Holy Spirit, his grace, Jesus is the person of grace. He will empower you not to even want those things. You know, the more you eat things that are good for you, the more you're going to want those things that are good for you. That's the same with the word of God. The more you want God, the more you eat of his word, eat of the bread of life, the more you'll want it. The more you want it, the more revelation knowledge comes. The more revelation knowledge comes, the more you want it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now let's look at our last scripture for today. And we're going to look at the book of Revelation. This is from the Knox Bible. I'm just going to look at chapter 1, verse 1. Now how many of you have heard that the book of Revelation is the revelation of John. I've heard that. Now let's read this. Listen, this is what the Bible says. Not Charlotte, the Bible. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God has allowed him to make known to his servants. There we are again. That cover is removed, 
God has allowed him to make known to his servants of things which must soon find their due accomplishment, and he has sent his angel to disclose. Remember when Jesus was talking to the religious people and he said, God includes me? That's so. That's just such a loving, embracing statement to make. We need to start thinking of God like that. He includes me. He just includes me because he loves me and he wants to. Isn't that beautiful? And he sent his angel to disclose. Remember, remember when we talked, I believe it was last week, about in, in the area of uh, real estate? You buy a house, there are some disclosures about that house. His angel to disclose the pattern of it to his servant John. So this is not the revelation of John, the Apostle John. It's the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God allowed him to make known to his servants. So let's, for this next week, during this next week, I would ask you, every morning, start your day out by acknowledging the Holy Spirit as your teacher, your guide, the one who reveals reveals all truth to you, and make it known to him that you are willing to be taught. You're hungry. You want to learn. You want to learn the ways of your Father. You want to be just like Jesus and say, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. You want to be like Abraham. He gives you just part of the instruction and you rise up early or you immediately respond with obedience to just part of that instruction without having the whole picture and trusting that as you go, toward that place that he's calling you to, that he will give you further instruction and the Holy Spirit will strengthen you. And pray in the Spirit every day. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I tell you these last days, you need it. I tell you, you need it like you can't be separated. It'd be like trying to separate wet from water. You need that empowering gift of praying in the Spirit, as Jude said, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Because praying in the Spirit is such a recharging. You know, they have things out today. They're Well, I guess they're out today. They came out quite a while ago. Um, rechargeable batteries. Well, you know, you don't recharge those batteries. You put them in that little recharger, and then when they're all done charging, put them in a drawer. There's usually a plan for that. You, the plan usually is to put them in something so that whatever that is, is empowered again. Because those batteries went in that charger. Well, that's what praying in other tongues does. I tell you, charges you up. You want to stay locked and loaded. In these last days, times are dangerous. You do not want to start your day out without first consulting with the Father, praying in the Spirit, pleading the blood of Jesus over yourself, your family, all that God has entrusted you with every day. And be open. Just be open to whatever He says. Don't put so much importance on understanding, but obedience. Just obey Him. Trust in his love toward you. Trust in that love toward you. He loves you. He would never lead and guide you into anything that would be harmful. And we're going to change our attitude of you never know what God is going to do. Everything happens for a reason. No, we're going to start connecting the dots. If I make a bad decision, I could perhaps have a bad consequence. Do I want that? We're going to think about these things. Start to really give them some thought, like we all did in Saudi Arabia before we gave our life over to the Lord. We knew it could cost us our life. That's, that's very true. So it's not something that none of us, any of us, did flippantly. So this week, start your day out, living from the inside out. Look internally. 
Look unto Jesus. The kingdom of God dwells within you. Become more and more dependent upon the Holy Spirit. And by doing that, you will become less and less attached to the world. Start eating the word of God. The more you eat the word of God, the more your palate acquires a taste for the word of God. And you will lose the taste of what the world has to offer. If anybody out there is not born again, doesn't know this life of empowerment, this indwelling of the kingdom inside of you, I invite you to just very simply say, I believe you, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I ask you, Jesus, invite you to be my Lord. Invite you to come in and change me. And I'm going to start eating your word because you're the bread of life. And your word is going to transform my mind. And I'll be a brand new creature. If you've got a shameful past, the blood of Jesus will wash away that past. And you won't have to live in shame and condemnation. This is just so vitally important. If you're a drug addict, you don't have to be one anymore. There is immediate deliverance for that. He's a one-step program. His name is Jesus. I was an alcoholic. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. I saw that the Holy Spirit was holy, holy. And there were just things that I lost a taste for because I just, I loved God. And I began to embrace how he loves me. And those things of the world lost their appeal. Nobody had to come and beat me over the head and say, you ought not to be doing that. I didn't want to do it. And as you begin to feed on the word of God, you will acquire a taste and the taste for the things of the world will just fade away. You will no longer be interested in those things. So this week, if you gave your heart to the Lord right now, send me an email, charlotte at livinginsideoutministry.com. Send me an email and tell me. Read our blogs. Get on Facebook. We're on Facebook. Get on Twitter if you want to get on Twitter. We're now on another social media. It's called, I'm not sure how to say it, Bizout, B-Z-O-U-T. We're on there now. We're on YouTube. Our teaching videos are on YouTube. They're also on our website. We're on Google+. Go someplace where you get fed the Word of God, because that's where your strength is. Remember this week, you live from the inside out. Always. Every day, no matter what storm, you live from the inside out. Draw from the kingdom that dwells within you. God bless you. I will see you in a week, if not earlier.